Hey guys, today's video is sponsored by iMobi and their AnyTrans software. AnyTrans can help you transfer all of your WhatsApp data from an iPhone over to an Android, or from an Android over to an iPhone, or from iPhone to iPhone, Android to Android. You can transfer everything, things like files, you can transfer photos, you can transfer also videos, and much more. AnyTrans can help you transfer all this data over cross-platform very easily. So check out AnyTrans, links will be in the description and down below. Hey guys, so in today's video, I want to talk about a few things you should avoid doing on your iPhone iPhone to get a better user experience overall, better battery, better performance, and all that good stuff. Now, these are going to be based on things that I see on a daily iOS users continue to do, misperceptions, comments that I get, and questions that I get on my YouTube videos. So without further ado, let's get right into this video, things you should avoid doing on your iPhone. Now, of course, if you would like to stay up to date with the latest iOS news and software updates, as always, don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications so that you don't miss another episode. Now, one of the most common things I see, behaviors I see from iOS users, which is wrong, is going into the app switcher after they're done using an application and quitting this application out. I've seen this happen every single day from friends and family members, also uh, questions on YouTube. Does this improve the user experience or actually make it worse? Well, iOS is designed to actually freeze apps in the background, so you don't have to quit an application from the app switcher if you're done using it. iOS will manage this application, it would freeze it in the background, and when you get back into the app, you see it quickly loads. If I quit the application for a split second, you're you're going to see the settings application load up. You see that? That was one split second, which means the iPhone is now using more resources in order to reload the entire process of the app instead of just picking up where it left off. Now, for those of you that do have more serious issues where your applications are very, very slow, your iPhone is stuttering through the menus, and it's just slow overall for whatever reason, there's one thing you can do, and only do this if your iPhone is really struggling through the OS. You want to head on over into settings. You want to head on over into the accessibilities tab and then you want to head on over into touch and enable the assistive touch option right here this will bring this little bubble into the screen as you can see right there and what you have to do now is click the volume up and the volume down key quickly and then press and hold the side key and we're going to quit everything from running in the background in order to bring that memory back in order to get the iPhone running at its full capacity again you only do this if you're really struggling through the OS if you feel like all the apps are choppy and slow so click up down volume or side button here hold it and then bring up the assistive touch menu right here you see the home key just press and hold on the home key it'll lock your device and this has quit all applications from running in the background this should bring all the memory back into your iphone but every single app will now reload because we quit everything you see safari just reloaded entirely settings is going to reload every application that was open is going to reload this freed up all the memory again only if you're having issues with your iPhone where it's super slow, this is what you want to do in order to get all that memory back in your iPhone into working order. However, if you're just simply browsing through your iPhone, you don't have to go ahead and quit every single app once you're done. That's just a bad habit. The iPhone is going to use more battery, it's going to use more resources, and it's actually going to hinder the user experience. It won't help it as much. Now, the other common thing I see from other users and other users have expressed sort of frustration with this one. This is within control center so in control center we have a Wi-Fi and Bluetooth toggles obviously and I've seen many users tell me you know what I just turned off Bluetooth and then I got into my friend's car or I don't know my car and it connected to the Bluetooth in the car automatically when I just turned off Bluetooth and the real thing is that within control center you are not turning off or turning off Wi-Fi or Bluetooth when you press these buttons. That's why they're grayed out and they're not completely turned off, as you can see. And I know why Apple does this, because Apple doesn't want Bluetooth to disconnect from an Apple Watch, for example. What this does is temporarily disconnect from the existing Bluetooth devices around you. So if you get into a vehicle, it recognizes a new source, so it enables Bluetooth and connects to the next Bluetooth device. So if you really want to turn off Bluetooth and Wi-Fi, right here in Control Center, you can't do that. You have to go into settings and then you have to go into Bluetooth or Wi-Fi and turn off Bluetooth entirely. Now take a look at that Bluetooth button now. You see how it's dark instead of grayed out? Now Bluetooth is turned off. So if you go to control center and you think you're turning off Bluetooth by doing this, you are not right there. Disconnecting from Bluetooth devices around you, except the Apple Watch by the way, and then it will connect to the next one. Same thing happens with Wi-Fi. So if you're at home and you leave and you turn off Wi-Fi from control center and then you get to school or work and you 
see that your iPhone automatically connected to that network. You're probably thinking, I just turned it off. Why would it do that? Again, it's simply disconnecting from the actual connections that are around you. But if you move somewhere else and it notices a new connection, it will connect to the new connection. So turning off Bluetooth and Wi-Fi from control center is not really turning it off, but rather disconnecting. You really have to go into settings if you really want to turn those features off directly from your iPhone. Now, one thing I always see a lot of users, especially teenagers around me do, is use low power mode all day, even if your battery is at 100% so they can get through the entire school day or whatever it is. So if you see someone doing this where they go to battery, they go to low power mode and their iPhone is above 60%, this is totally wrong because what low power mode does is it actually throttles your iPhone a bit in order to preserve the power and give you through the day, right? So low power mode helps you get you through that last, I wanna say 10 to 15% of your battery here on your iPhone. So if you're constantly using it all day, what you're doing is you're making your iPhone slow all day for no particular reason. So don't use low power mode all day. It is not a good habit. And last but not least, I wanna talk about the app tracking feature on the iPhone. Now, many users have a lot of questions about this one. If we head on over into settings, privacy right here we have tracking now many users believe that if allowing apps to track you is enabled on the top that apps can still track you and that's not true as long as these toggles right here individually are turned off right here you have the control to actually tell an application if they can track you or not for advertising purposes and as you can see here i have most applications turned off but you can also turn off the entire option here and this is where some users get confused if i turn this option off will all applications track me and you have a question down here that is very clear allow apps to continue to track me this means that all applications will track you whether you get prompted or not and down here you have ask apps to stop tracking me if you click on stop tracking me this means that when you turn this option off all applications will not track you you will not get prompted to get tracked or not but automatically they will not track you when you have this option on it means you have the ability to decide which applications track your or not if you turn it off again you have the ability to actually allow all apps to track you or allow all apps to not track you so if you don't want any apps to track you just turn it off and choose the option or ask apps not to track me and that way no apps will track you but again you can manage that individually and hopefully that answers the question for that particular option i know it can get a little bit confusing but the options are there and that's everything i wanted to share with you guys again these have been common misperceptions uh behaviors that actually hinder the user experience and trying to answer a few questions from some of my youtube videos i hope you guys enjoy the video thank you for watching today's episode and i'll see you guys on the next one peace